Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great Thursday. Obviously, the markets didn't do too well today. So we're gonna talk about obviously what happened in the markets today with Bitcoin being down. Well, it was up earlier today, but then it fell down along with the miners. So we had a bad day in both, but we'll take a look at it. Also, there's not much news going on as far as the miners are concerned. So I've been doing a lot of research on BitDeer. I spent probably a total of five, six hours in total just trying to get all the numbers and everything, and it's just a mess. But We'll get through it all. I'll explain everything as much as I can for you guys. And hopefully maybe you guys have some more info than I don't. If that's the case, hit me down in the comments below. But as always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research and invest in the following coins and companies for full disclosure. And let's get into the markets. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. And here we go. So the markets today. S&P was down 0.68%. Dow Jones was up 0.47%. The NASDAQ was down 2.05%. Bitcoin was down today. Uh, didn't finish out too bad, but it was up much higher today. It had a high today of 30,421, a low of 29,564, and it closed at 29,809. It was down 0.36% on the day. It is still, uh, well, trading within our range here that we have for it. If we look at the daily lines on it as well, you can see that it is below, obviously, the 20-day moving average here for the last couple of days. That's been trading for, well, four days now, including today that we are in. It's the new day. Uh, but it hasn't come down all the way down to the 50-day moving average. It has kind of slightly bounced off of that bottom at uh, bottom triangle that we're in right now. Okay. Um, looking at uh, that one, it looks like it's trying to go down before the FOMC meeting or at least it's trending downwards. I think once we have the FOMC meeting next week, we get a 25 basis points rate hike on interest rates. That is possibly going to be the catalyst that's going to drive us down lower. Okay, and we'll have to see if that happens. But if that happens, we're looking to possibly bounce off of the 50-day. I think that's going to be probably next. Um, we're probably going to fall below that. So our support line is going to be probably the 28,600 line here. If that doesn't hold, hopefully either the 200 weekly moving average line which is right here, which is going to be pretty close to the 200 daily moving line. That's going to be right around 27,000. Uh, that might act as our next support line. But we'll have to see next week what happens. Okay. So we'll take those off. Actually, we'll take a look at Ethereum here really quick as well. See how that one's progressing. And that one has also been trading the last, well, two days, three days, counting the days, be three days below the 20-day moving average. And it's bouncing off of the 50-day moving average on that one. Okay. So Ethereum was actually up today just barely 0.16% on the day, closed at 1,891, okay? Now, as far as the miners are concerned, let me see if I can turn this stuff off here. Why is it not cooperating? There we go. Okay, that one, that one. All right, those are off. Let's take a look at Annie. Annie was the only one that was up today. It was up 0.78%. The miners, on the other hand, were all down. Well, all the other miners were down. And you can see here, let's take a look at the one-hour charts on these guys here. And you'll be able to see on some of these that we were actually up on the day for a little bit. Um, Argo actually wasn't, looks like it was up at all. Let me see, the 19th, 20th, yeah, it just started the day, it was down all day. So it was down 6.75%. Bit Digital was down also 4.83%. Bit Deer was down 2.98%. Bit Farms was down 7.03%. Cypher was down 5.3%. CleanSpark was down 6.74 before it actually even went up here. So it started out in the green a little bit here in the morning, and it just continued to fall down. Uh, Core Scientific was down 0.82%, Digihost was down 6.95%, DMG was down 8.43%, Greenage was down quite a bit here, 12.39% on the day, High was down 5.71%, Hot 8 was down 5.5%, Iris Energy was down 10.13%, Marathon was down 3.01%, Mawson was down 2.45%, Riot was down 2.43%, Saluna was down 7.5%, 0.3%, Stronghold was down 7.62%, and Wolf was down 8.99% on the day. So, like I said, not a great day for the miners. Um, we've had, it's going to be a pretty rough week for the miners. Uh, we were up a little bit yesterday, but overall, um, a lot of the miners were down for this week, I think. So we'll see how tomorrow is going to react. Okay, that's it for the miners. Let's take a look at the network hash rate really quick as well, see what's going on there. Let's see if we have any changes. And we still have the same numbers from yesterday. It looks like we were at 381 million tera hashes on the seven day average and on the daily average we're still down to 343 million so we have come back down on that one okay so let's get into bit deer here um like i said i've spent about probably five six hours looking into them trying to get all the data that i can on them there isn't a lot of information on them because they went i believe through a spec merger 
recently in April that that commenced, finished up. So they've been trading as a public miner since April, basically. Okay, not a lot of information out there for them as far as operation updates for their mine, what they're buying, what they're actually mining with. Um, a lot of missing information that I would love to see on this, and unfortunately, they don't provide it here. So BitDeer is a world-leading technology company for the cryptocurrency mining community. Headquartered in Singapore, BitDeer mines cryptocurrencies for its own account and serves the cryptocurrency mining community by providing innovative, reliable, and easy-to-use cryptocurrency mining solutions. BitDeer handles complex processes involved in mining such as miner procurement, transport logistics, mining data center design, and construction, and mining machine management and daily operations. BitDeer has mining data centers deployed in the United States, Norway, and I think they got another new facility as well uh, just recently here, which isn't being reported here. But if we look at the press releases here, you can see here that there aren't too many here. <laughs> I mean, that's all we have is going back through April 14th. That's kind of what we have to go by. There's no uh, April production update. We only have May and June so far right now. I was waiting on June to see if they would report it. They did. So that's kind of why I'm covering them right now. Uh, my only single criteria to cover the miners is they have to provide the monthly production updates. Okay, so like I said, not a lot of information here from them. We were able to get some information from them on other things. Uh, I looked through all of this stuff as far as webcasts and presentations. Nothing is in here. I looked at other places as well. The only place I could find it was in their financials and their uh, merger <coughs> or SPAC agreements. I was able to find some of the information here, uh, but still not as complete as I'd like, to, like it to be. Okay, so if we look at there, this is their third quarter or first quarter for 2023. Numbers, we, this is where I pulled a lot of the stuff in. They also, let me see here. They purchased, uh, in partnership for, uh, in preparation for the partnership launch in May 2023, we have ordered 30,000 new mining machines to, do, to be deployed on site, thus laying a solid foundation for project's success. So this is a new one that they're working with, uh, Buchten, is a collaboration project. And they were currently at 4.1 proprietary hash rate for 4.1 as of December 31st. And 5.7 exa hash as of March 31st, 2023. Um, and this includes um, some of the other things, but we'll get into all the numbers here in a minute. Uh, let me see here. They have also a lot of business segments. So this gets a little confusing a little bit here. Uh, looking down here, let's see what else do we have here. Proprietary hash rate. Uh, okay, here we go. So 3.9 exa hash allocated to the company's self mining business and 1.8 exa hash to its cloud hash rate business as well. So that's the proprietary hash that they call it. Okay, so they only have 3.9 exa hash for their self mining, which is kind of what we like to look at as far as the miners are concerned. A lot of the other segments and businesses are typically not profitable. If we look at hosting, we've seen it with Riot, we've seen it with uh, Core Scientific as well. Those segments tend to be a money pit for some reason. They're just not profitable for them. So I was looking really interested to see how they did it. And unfortunately, we don't have the information for them. They don't break down the costs associated with each of the business segments that they list, unfortunately. So it's kind of, uh, we're kind of in the dark on that as far as which business segment is profitable and which one is not. Okay, first quarter of financial revenues, we'll get into that in my spreadsheet. A couple other things that I wanted to point out to you guys here on their, this is from their form 20F, which is for the uh, combination during the spec merger, I believe. Okay, a couple of things that I highlighted in here are their different business segments that they do have right now. So they have cloud hash rate. The group enters into cloud hash rate arrangements with its customers by offering hash rate subscription plans to provide computing power in a, speci a specified quantity measured by the computing power per second or hash rate derived from the mining machines held by the group for a specific period of time. So this is kind of where you get to basically like lease um, hash rate basically. I believe that's the way it works. Uh, the customer also needs to pay for the electricity subscriptions, which are billed separately. So if those are billed separately, they should know what their basically what their costs are for each segment, business segment, but they don't report it. Uh, to maintain the mining machines that produce the subscribed hash rate over the contract period, and the group connects such computing power to a customer designed mining pool under the instructions of the customer to simplify the customer's mining experiences. As a result of indirect of directing the connection of such computing power to the mining pools, the customers are entitled to the mining rewards, which are directly transferred from the mining pool to the customer's designated cryptocurrency wallet, which is basically um, what cloud hash rate is. Basically, it's um, you basically rent out hash rate, rent out lease, 
whatever you want to call it, that's what it is, okay? Next business segment is going to be on proprietary mining. So the group enters into contracts with mining pool operators to provide computing power generated from the group's own mining machines to the mining pools. The current contracts with the mining pools operator are terminal, terminable at any time by either party. In exchange for providing compu computing power to the mining pool, the group is entitled to cryptocurrency rewards from the mining pool operators, which is a variable consideration calculated based on the predetermined formula agreed by the group and the mining pool operator as part of the arrangement. So this is their like self-mining here, proprietary, which also includes um, some other things as well, I think. Uh, next is going to be cloud hosting. So the group provides its customers through subscriptions of cloud hosting orders, one-stop mining machine hosting solution, which integrates the provision of computing power generated from specified second-hand mining machines and the provision of maintenance services, primarily including electricity supply and daily maintenance and repair care. The group charges the customer an upfront fixed amount at the commencement of the cloud hosting arrangement for, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Excuse me, for the customer to secure the procurement of the computing power from the specified mining machines, as well as variable fees for the provision of maintenance services based on the consumption of resources such as electricity uh, through, throughout the duration of the service. The group historically only accepts cryptocurrency as payments for services under the cloud hosting arrangement. So that's kind of also like, um, so it's, okay, here we go. The cloud hosting arrangements are offered under two modes. Under the classic mode, the customer receives all of the mining rewards from the mining pool. Under the accelerated mode, the customer is charged with a lower upfront amount and enjoys a quicker recovery of the cost. In exchange, the group is entitled to additional consideration once customer's cost is covered. Okay, so that's the other part of their second or another segment of their business. The other one here is the sale of mining machines. So the group recognizes revenue from sales of mining machines to customers at the point in time when control of the mining machine is transferred to the customer, which generally occurs upon shipment of the mining machines as defined in the revenue contracts. So they do that. Uh, this kind of reminds me of a lot like Core Scientific. If you remember, they were they had a lot of um, sales of mining machines. They also had hosting. They also have their self mining, but they have it broken down into even more business segments than what Cores did. Uh, let's see here: sale mining, general hosting. So general hosting, the group provides general hosting services, which is combined service package, including custody and hosting of the customer's mining machine. So these are their mining machines, customers, electricity and network maintenance and other services that enable the customers to run blockchain computing operations. The customer is only able to benefit from the hosting service as a package and the group has a single performance obligation. The hosting service fee is charged to the customer monthly as a single fee based on the customer's consumption of resources, such as the amount of electricity used in a period, revenue from the general hosting service, is recognized across each service cycle. The group accepts both cryptocurrency and fiat uh, currency as payments for the hosting service. So that's basically you have, the way I understand it is you have your own miners, you send them to their facilities and they host them for you. Okay, then they also have membership hosting. The group offers its large scale miners customers membership hosting services by entering into a series of contracts, which includes a membership program agreement and a management services agreement. These contracts are signed with the same customer at or near the same time, and they are combined and accounted for as a single contract. So pursuant to the membership program agreement, a customer subscribing to the program is entitled to the program benefit of receiving mining machines management services as described below within the predetermined capacity measured by the energy consumption, kilowatts, the capacity, the group provides such designated capacity in the least mining data center, and the program subscription period starts with the time when the designated capacity is made available to the customer and ends when the group or no longer operates with the mining data center. So, I mean, it seems like the same things here. I don't know what the difference is between the two. Um, let's see, the system provides services. Yeah, not sure what the difference is between those two. And then, so details of revenues for each category are as follows. Um, so they do break it down as far as the revenue that's generated from them, but they don't provide the operating costs for each one of those. They lump it all together in one thing, which makes it hard to determine which one is profitable, which one is not. Um, so you can see here that proprietary mining was 62.3 million in 2022, 191 million in 2021. So definitely a big decrease from the prior year. Then you got cloud hash rate, which has hash rate subscriptions. That was 77.8 million. That was actually up from 2021. So that was good electricity subscription. Uh, I'm not sure on that one, what that one is for, but that's 39 million. That was up from 35 million. And then additional consideration from cloud hash rate arrangements under accelerated mode was only 
3.9. So it looks like a lot of people went the other direction, looks like, on this, or at least got out of it, because they had 35 million in 2021, and they had only 3.9 million in 2022. So that was a bust, it looks like. Uh, sales of mining machines, way down here to 705,000 compared to 45 million in 2021. We saw the same thing happen with Core Scientific as well, where in 2021 they had huge sales for mining machines, but in 2022 that just dried right up. Cloud hosting arrangements was 12 million, so that was up from the 7.5 million. And then general hosting was way up to 99 million from the 18.3 million. And then membership hosting was something that was brought in new in 2022, that was only 26 million. And it looks like maybe some of that switched over from here to there, possibly. And you got some others, which uh, others include revenue generated primarily from providing technical and human resources and repairment. Okay, so that's they had 10 million on that. So total revenue was 33. 333 million in 2022 and in 2021 it was 394 a decrease but not a big decrease um, but still a decrease of 61 million that's still quite a bit here uh, i mean we were still in bear market in 2022 so that's still pretty good that they were able to do that okay let's see what else do we have here that uh, was details of revenue cost of revenue here we go so cost of revenue consists primarily of electricity expenses incurred for operating the group's mining machines and its revenue generating activities depreciation expense from the mining machines and data centers hosting those mining machines, cost of mining machines sold to customers, and compensation expenses incurred by mining data center personnel. So they lump all that stuff in there, okay? They don't break it down too well, uh, which is, like I said, really, really bad. Okay, so number 16 here, expenses by nature. So a couple of things to take a look at here. Salaries, salaries, obviously wages and other benefits went uh, quite a bit here up 13 million in 2022 to 15 million from 37 million. Share-based payments, also quite a bit here, 90 million in share-based payments. Um, that seems like a lot. Uh, depreciation, electricity costs and operating mining machines. They lump it all together, 139 million. We don't know what that cost was for the individual segments of their business. Uh, cost of mining machines sold. So that definitely dropped quite a bit there in 2022 compared to 2021. Taxes, what else do we have here? Office expense, which is fine. Research and development is fine. Expenses, variable payment or something else. Logistics, travel expenses. 3.2 million for travel expenses. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see what else do we have here that was highlighted that I wanted to show you guys. 16 bit dear to know this year. Okay. This was Bitty Technologies holding company and subsidiaries notes to the consolidated financial statements. These are shares outstanding. Shares allotment upon reorganization. I believe they did like a 10 to 1 reverse split on this or something like that. Because in here it shows they have 461 million shares. Series B was 870 million shares, which is a lot, obviously, at the beginning of 2021. At the end, they still ended up with pretty much the same amount. So it looks like 461, yeah. Okay. So that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys there. And based on what I'm showing right now, it's like 112 million shares that they have based on what's being provided by some of these services out there. Okay, so that's the information that we do have. Now let's take a look at the numbers that we do have here for them. So shares outstanding for BitDeer is right now about 111 million. Based on the current market cap, stock price, divide those, and you get basically the shares outstanding. Um, don't know if that's correct. If you guys know any other different, better numbers, <clears throat> Please let me know. But that's kind of what I was able to figure out. Current hash rate, as they reported for June, was 4.6 exahash for their self mining. This is what we're tracking. Future hash rate, based on the 30,000 miners that they're going to be adding on, will be an additional 3.3 exahash added to that to about 7.9 exahash. Uh, BTC production here. So the first three months, January, February, and March, are an estimate. They provided they had 500 some Bitcoins mined. Um, I don't know exactly how much Bitcoins were mined each month, so I just took that number divided by three, and this is kind of what we get. Okay, now April is also an estimate. I don't know exactly how much they mined in, in April because they did not provide the numbers for April. May, we know it's 283. June, they provided 239. Uh, May also included a lot of the network tr transaction fees in there. That helped not only them, but it helped all the other miners as well. So I'm guessing since they are at 239 in June, I'm guessing they're kind of going to be around 210, 215 in April, somewhere around there. I don't know exactly where. So my numbers are definitely going to be an estimate, a real educated estimate as far as where they could be as far as revenue is concerned for the second quarter here that we're in. Okay. Now going down here, you can see the month over month difference between BTC mine. 
BTC per month exahash efficiency. Those, like I said, the first three months are an estimate here. That's why they come in pretty much the same. Uh, they were at 70.5 in May, June 52, uh, 52 exahash, BTC per exahash. And it looks like they sell pretty much everything that they hodl. I don't see anything reported that they hold anything. Um, so I'm guessing that they're selling everything right now. Okay. Uh, hash rate. They reported 3.9 exahash um, at the end of the year, for de ending December. Don't know what they did in January, February, March. So in May, they reported that they were at 4 exahash. This is kind of what we got them to now. June, they reported they were 4.6. So this is where we are at right now. Revenue. This is their revenue estimated based on January, February, March numbers for Bitcoin going up in value, obviously. April is an estimate. Like I said, May is um, providing numbers what they mine in Bitcoin. I'm using the average Bitcoin price for each month here. Okay, so you guys can see that. Here's the hash rate difference. BTC sold value. We talked about that. And right now, let's see here. Q1. Okay, so the 72.5 million in Q1 is everything included. Because they didn't provide, I think they didn't provide the, um, I'll have to check, but I believe, no, they did provide the breakdown of it, but for whatever reason, I have it in my settings right now, calculating all of it. In the current quarter that we're in, I'm estimating 20.5 million roughly in revenue for self-mining alone. Does that include any of the other business segments that they do have? Okay. They reported 33, 333 million in 2022 total. It wasn't broken down into which segments. Uh, operating costs, you can see here that the operating costs were higher than what the revenue was. So they were uh, negative on earnings. And also, cost to mine one BTC, like I said, I can't figure that out because I can't figure out what the actually expenses are for their self-mining compared to everything else. And we'll get to that down below. Uh, Become on quarterly, we only have the first quarter here, the numbers for them. Uh, we'll obviously get the second quarter numbers when they do get reports, probably in a month or so. Okay. Uh, I didn't even look into the institution side of things here yet, so don't even go into that. I haven't had the time to do that. I will update this eventually. Uh, based on the numbers here, um, let's see here. Debt and equity, it was in Q1.98, and current ratio is at 10.37, so they're good there. Total current assets has come down a little bit here to $405 million from 411 uh, for the year. And total current liabilities are at 39 million, it looks like. Okay. Based on all of this, because I don't have the exact numbers for the last three quarters, I'm using an estimated number of what they had. We know what they had in Q1, but I don't know what they had in Q4, Q3 of last year. I'm kind of taking the numbers that they had in the fiscal year 2022, dividing that by basically oh, four and getting a number for the last three quarters, adding the Q1 numbers into it. Okay, so that's kind of how that's being calculated. Current quarter, like I said, it's going to be about 20.5 million. Oh, let's see here. Based on that, I gave them a P of 15 because their growth isn't that much in their self-mining. Based on these numbers, I'm at $3.77 to $5.66. This is very, very, uh, how would I put this? Very educated guess as far as where they should be valued because, like I said, we don't have all the numbers. Okay, they're currently at $12.12. .12. Based on if I knew which business segments were profitable, I could probably figure out a little bit better how they should be valued, right? If hosting is not profitable, well, then the majority of their income is going to be coming from, obviously, their self-mining. And if other segments aren't profitable as well, which be, it would be nice to see which business segments are profitable, which ones are not, okay? So this is just take this with a grain of salt, okay? Future estimates. This is based on the current, let me see, make sure I get this right, that we're using the current quota here. Monthly stats, June, let's see here. June, yep, we're using 6.6 .6 million for June. Okay, so that's being multiplied times 12. Then we're looking at possibly $5.37 to $8.05 with a P of 15. That's kind of the range there based on future. That's, I think, a little bit more possible and depending on the other business segments. If the other business segments are doing better than their self-hosting, well, then things would be a little bit different there. That's kind of where I'm seeing things right now. Okay, uh, let's see here. You guys can see the numbers here. I'm not going to get into it. Okay, the miners. They reported May 15th for their 2022 fiscal year, end of year financial numbers, that they had basically for self-mining 42,000 miners and a hash rate of, I think they said 3.922, something like that, or pretty close to that. 
so we got it to about the minor speed on average, average out about 93.4 terahash per miner. We don't know which miners they have. They didn't report it, couldn't find it. So that's kind of what we're going by. And then they're also reporting that they're going to be getting, uh, oh, they installed more miners here in May and in June. So these are the numbers that got installed. Also, as far as their operations are concerned, we'll get into this here really quick as well. Um, so we installed, it looks like, 1,000 miners of the 93.4 terahash in May, and then 6,250 in June. Now, as far as their uptime is concerned, based on the number of miners, Bitcoins that they provided for mining in May and June, April is an estimate. It looks like they were only operating for about 20 days in April, 25 days in May, and that was probably because of the big benefit in the network transaction fees. And then in June, it looks like they were only operating for about 21 days. So they are, I'm guessing, having to curtail quite a bit here as well. Um, like some of the other miners like Riot, Marathon, and others as well, they're having to curtail quite a bit to get us to the price targets for based on where Bitcoin is, uh, the average Bitcoin price times the Bitcoins they generated. That's kind of what we're getting here, um, the numbers, okay? So definitely a lot of curtailment there. And then they also, in the June update, they provided that approximately, well, they're supposed to get about 30,000 miners of and get to 3.3x a hash, that would get them to, the miners to be on average 110 terahash miners, okay? Don't know what the mix is on the miners that they're getting. Could be, you know, some 140 terahash miners, some 100 ter terahash miners, or some 120 terahash miners, don't know. This is kind of the average that we're going to be using here going forward for them. So based on that, I'm getting to about 7.9 for the self-mining here sometime this year, potentially, by the end of the year. Okay. All right, we're almost done through this, guys. Uh, I do apologize. It's a lot of data and a lot of stuff is missing here. So I'm, hopefully as time goes by, we'll get more um, data that we'd like to see. We'll get back into this here in a little bit. We already covered about their current assets. Uh, current assets are at 405 million right now. Uh, total assets is at 636 million, so they do have a lot there. Total current liabilities is at 39 million. And total liabilities, it looks like it's at 300... Uh, 315 million looks like, right? Deferred revenue, borrowings, leased liabilities, that calculates total current liabilities. Yeah. So that comes out to be, that seems like high. 69, oh yeah, that would work out, I guess. 315 million in total, and they have 636 total assets. A million, okay? Revenue. Okay, so in at the end of 2022, they provided for the fiscal numbers just a, Total numbers, they didn't provide a breakdown of it. So that's kind of what we're using there. In Q1, they did provide the numbers. So for self-mining, they had 13.2 million. Cloud hash rate was 18 million. General hosting was 22.1 million. Membership hosting was 16.5 million. And then other was 2.78 for a total of 72.5 million in revenue in Q1. Now, when it comes to expenses, here's the problem that I've been saying. Expenses came in at about 82.79 million. So definitely a loss there. And they lumped everything in and energy and infrastructure at 59 million. And then it's just, how do you figure out which part of this business segment is profitable? You can't. I tried looking into it to see if maybe I could figure it out back here where I used the percentages of what they actually, uh, what the percentages of revenue was and then taking that into account. But that's not always the case either because with hosting, there's always more costs involved than there is with just their own self-mining. So I'm like, I gave up on that. Hopefully that we'll get that information maybe in the following quarters. Uh, maybe if you know investors scream loud enough at them, maybe they'll provide it in there because I think it is very important to have that information to see which business segments are profitable. Okay, selling expense was 2.4 million. Research and development was 6.2 million. I don't know why they spent so much uh, on research and development. General administrative was 16 million. And then other operating income was 805. So profit slash loss from operations was negative 10 million on that one. Okay, uh, let's see here. Shares reported. So these are the number of shares that they reported, basically diluted. Obviously, we have more shares now. I don't know how that got all flipped around after the merger. And this back merger, basically. What else do I want to show you? Oh, there you go. There are facilities. So facilities are, they have 13 megawatts in Washington. Texas has 563 megawatts. And they have some 179 megawatts. Don't know where that is, whether that's up north. Tennessee has about 86 megawatts. Ohio has 275 megawatts. 
And then you got Norway has 20 megawatts, 64 megawatts, 50 megawatts, and 175 megawatts. And Bhutan now has 100 megawatts as well. That's in the works as well. So that's kind of where they're located all over the place. Okay. Based on all of this, it's hard for me to determine if they are over or undervalued right now. Just don't have enough information on it. My guess would be that possibly somewhere between here they should be valued. I think they're being way, way, way overvalued based on uh, being valued at 1.3 billion basically right now. And they're, I would say, self-mining is half of what Riot has. It's not even close to what Core has. Um, CleanSpark has even more than them. Bitfarms has even more than them. And they have much lower uh, market caps right now. But like I said, I would need to really see what's going on with all of their business segments as far as if they're profitable or if they're not profitable. So like I, I keep beating this horse, but unfortunately I have to keep beat that horse because it's very important to get those infor that information and we don't have it, unfortunately. Okay, so let me know what you guys think of this. It's been a little bit drawn out. I tried to take as much time as I could to explain everything to you guys so you guys know where I'm coming from with all of this. And right now I just don't know, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, helps me out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, bye.